hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. And Marianne behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food and Mare. Today we are going to look at some vintage housewares, some fun kitchen tools and gadgets. How's that sound? That sounds fun. Well, I'll tell you what sort of inspired this whole thing. Did you know our friend Jennifer? Yes, I do. Well, she gifted me this wonderful book, Spiffy Kitchen Collectibles. And look, look, look what it is, Mayor. It's just filled with um, gadgets and kitchen tools uh, of vintage period. So, of course, I loved it, and I've gone through this book a few times already. Thank you, Jennifer. And this book was written about 20 years ago or so, but um, as I was going through it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a lot of that stuff. And I said, well, that would be fun to share with our food friends. So we're doing it. What do you think of that? Um, so anyways, Mayor, what I've got here out is just a sampling, but... These are kitchen tools that people would have purchased at a store like the Ben Franklin that we're in right now, or Woolworths, or Kresge's, or Crest's, McCrory, uh, Newberry, whatever dime store you had in your area, um, or a hardware store uh, also, you know, your local hardware store in the housewares department, they had this kind of stuff. And there were gadgets and tools for about every use in the kitchen. And let's start right over here. Look at this one still in the box. This is a hand grater with offset cape handle. And check that out. See how that's designed? Yes. Um, and so, of course, graters were popular. You had ones like that. You had, you know, here's a hand grater, fairly small. Um, these you saw, these you saw a lot of. These had uh, two, you know, a larger and a smaller grater. Look, this one even had a couple of different slicers. Uh, one for sort of a, a crinkle slice and one for a regular slice. Look at this one, Mayor. Can you figure out how this worked? You put it like the, a bowl okay. and you'd put that right out you know you'd put the bowl here and then you'd grate it um, like so, that. So the vegetables go right into the bowl. Right exactly. Um, then you know what that is? Is that for tea? Yes it's for tea. Um, you could also use it for like spices you know if you were going to do like a bouquet garni or something like that but um, yes, it's primarily used for tea. This would be a, for biscuits. Yes, or well, this is a double. Oh, for donuts. Donuts, but see this little circle on the inside. Yeah. Check that out. Come. You take that out, and now you've got a biscuit color. So it's for biscuits and donuts, which is kind of cool. Um, this is an Aladdin knife sharpener so you put the knife through there and you pull it I've got a variety of these look familiar for ice cream yes ma'am ice cream so we have these traditional kind of scoop shapes this one almost looks like a big spoon doesn't it yeah but it's made out of solid aluminum Matter of fact, it's just, it's already cool to the touch. And then this one, you see what it says on there? Seal test. Seal test. So this you would have got um, maybe where you if you bought seal test ice cream. We have Pierre often on Cavalcade of Food, my favorite um, spoon rest. And then you had things like this. This was a funnel. But this one, Mare, look how cool this is. If you are putting something into a narrow or a small opening, like a salt shaker or something, 
or you could take it off and you could have a wider uh, opening in the funnel. Um, of course we have strainers uh, here and notice, I don't know if you can tell Mare, but like here the handle the paint is sort of flaking off. It's wooden underneath it. It was not uncommon to see wooden handles. This is very early plastic, but before there was a lot of use in plastics, a lot of these things, like from the 30s and even into the 40s, you can see that. See how that's wood? Yeah. And then here's an early plastic one. These are, you know what these are for? Mashed potatoes. Exactly right. Um, this is a Mooley product. Um, and it's a, you see how that works? You put the stuff in here, maybe a carrot or uh, a piece of cheese, and then you hold it down there and you turn it and it comes out here and it grates it. You know what that is? Um, I think Italian making sauce. Making. Oh, it's for garlic. Yes, a garlic press. You put your clove of garlic in there and you press it out. And then we've got, here's just a, a bunch of odds and ends. I just wanted to show these, these fun handles. Um, do you see a theme, Mare, with regards to color? Red. Red. Red was a popular and still is a really popular kitchen color. But here's, here's some examples of early plastic candles. Uh, and then here, these are wo painted wooden handles. You know, the thing about the wood, wood handles was they didn't get hot. Um, now, do you know what these instruments are for? Um, the one... That one is the for cheese. Correct. This one is also for cheese. See that thin wire? So it's like for slicing through a hard brick of cheese okay. uh, and making slices. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. uh, a basting brush uh, or, uh, you know, for doing like an egg wash. You know what? <laughs> You know what this is? A crinkle cutter for crinkle. carrots and other vegetables. Yes. Fun, isn't it? To make them it? fancy. To make it fancy. And a lot of these things were made by a company called Echo. E-K-C-O. Very popular housewares company. Mayor. Oop. Check this out. You know what this is for? It's a jar opener. You are correct. This is actually... So, you know, you can adjust it to the size of the jar. You can't get that pickle jar open. Uh, you could also use it like this, okay, to open like a bottle top. Okay. And then you see if you needed to puncture a can, you could put use that. Speaking of bottle openers, look at all of these. So, these are all kind of for use for like beer bottles and pop bottles, you know, when... We drank out of glass bottles instead of all the plastic junk we use now. This one is sort of has a, you can open a can, you can open a bottle, and it even has a corkscrew built in. A lot of these were promotions. I don't know if the camera can get what this says on it. Stroh's. Stroh's beer. beer. Detroit's finest. Beer. And um, I don't know if your dad likes Stroh's beer. Yeah. And... Uh, Anyways, so, you know, a lot of this was promotional stuff. Look at this old corkscrew. Uh, still works great uh, to pull a, a cork out of a, a wine bottle. You ever see one of these little gizmos? You put it on an orange or a lemon. Yes, or grapefruit, any kind uh -huh. of citrus. You sort of screw it into the fruit, yeah. and you squeeze. It even has a little lid. And then in the same line, that's a juicer here. Um... I use this all the time. This is called a ricer. ricer. You're right. This is called a ricer. It's great for using it for potatoes uh, or anything. Cauliflower now, too, you can rice uh, if you want to make it nice and smooth. 
this is a melon baller to make, um, you know, to use for a cantaloupe or honeydew or, or a, um, and here you can really get fancy. Look at that shape. Mm -hmm. Now check this crazy thing out, Mayor. Any idea? To slice something. Well, these are sort of the two, these two have the same idea with these rotary slices. This is for mincing and chopping like parsley or other herbs. You have it on the cutting board here. Okay, huh. and you go like this. Now, so of course here you've got six blades at once going and it does it, chops it up. Here's the same thing. You go like this with it and you chop up your herbs. Um, you could also use this if you were making homemade pasta and you wanted to cut like linguine or spaghetti, okay? Um, this one even has a grater on it. Then of course we have potato peelers by the galore. So these all have what we call a floating a floating blade. It kind of rotates. Um, that's an oldie. These all are. Boy, you'd hate to have to peel 50 pounds of potatoes with those, but people did. Look at this one, Mayor. It's even got a little built-in grater on it. Oh, this. You ever seen one of these? Is that to make a vegetable fancy? Exactly. It's kind of, see, this got a blade right here, and this screws down onto, say, you know, a zucchini or something, and you twirl it, and it cuts it. Um, let's come over here. Oh, talk about fancy. Little forks. Say no more. Check that out, Mayor. Now, is that high class? Yeah. Yeah, for, your, for our hors d'oeuvres. And then, these are still in the original package. These are thermometers for your refrigerator and freezer to make sure that, you know, it's staying cold enough. Look at that price tag. Hudson. Uh, JL Hudson's, best department store of all time here in Detroit. Um, wish it was still around. These you see a lot. These are Feimster's Famous Vegetable Slicer. And Mayor, they used to demonstrate these. Um, do you remember when we were kids and we would go to like carnivals or the state fair or something like that? And there would be a guy talking real fast and demonstrating different slicers and things. Yeah. God, I love that. I was f so fascinated by that. Well, this is one of the things that they would do. And it's kind of an idea is you've got a blade here and it's like a mandolin. And, you know, you could, and that guy could make coleslaw and slice potatoes like nobody's business in seconds. Now, come on. Who doesn't need a weenie wheel? Um, this is so fun, but I don't know if you can, t it's, it's for use if you had a rotisserie on your barbecue grill or in your oven, uh, or broiler, or something like that, and you can put, you know, I think a, a dozen uh, hot dogs on there and grill them. Uh, here's a little slicer, look at that thing. Check this out, Mayor. Great Necks Kitchen Saw. Um, with high quality hand sharpened butcher blade for frozen foods, frozen meats, and cutting through bones. It's almost kind of ghoulish, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this thing. Wow. Um, yeah. Isn't that something? Um, uh, our friends, uh, Janice and Gary, I don't, don't remember where they found this, but they gave this to me. Ooh, it's even got a rusty blade. Oh, my even God. Even better. <laughs> don't get any ideas, okay? But, you know, uh, sometimes I could see in the kitchen you might need a saw. Okay, you know what this guy is? It's an onion. It's, <laughs> it's, it's an onion. It's supposed to look like one, but what it really is is basically... You put your cleanser in there, 
and you keep it by the sink. Instead of having like a can of cleanser, yeah. you know what I mean? Sitting by the sink, you have this little fun guy. Then, here's some little gadgets. They used to give these out at Tupperware parties. I don't know if you remember that, Mary. Yeah. Um, this is a coffee scoop, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and you that's know? to um, get the yolk and the white separate. You are correct. That's what it's for. It's an, it's an egg, egg separator. separator. Um, now, these are all things for chopping stuff. Um, we used to have one of those. Yeah, uh, a nut chopper, right? Yep. And then here's a really old version of that. You can put the nuts in there and chop them by turning this, or you can put the nuts in the jar and turn it over, and they'll come out this way. Um, here is a kind of a multi-bladed chopper. These were very popular. These were called, I think, quick cuts. And basically, you would use it like this, and you would use it to chop a lot of things quickly. Now, do you remember Mom had one of these? Yep, make french fries. It's, yep, you put your potato in there, and you push it through, and there's your french fries. It's amazing how making french fries at home was like a really popular thing for a while um, in, the, in the 50s. Now here's a variation on that. This one is spring-loaded. So you put the potato here, you press this down, and your, your french fries come up. You could also put like an onion in there and do that. Slice it this way. Now, you've seen me use these before. Pastry blender. Exactly. So this is for cutting fat into your flour for making pastries. And then things like this were very popular. Um, here's a couple of old uh, uh, drawer organizers for silverware. Right, Mary? Right. We always had these. Um, and we still do. And we, st <laughs> we still do. So here is a handy hostess kit. Now these were very popular in the 40s and 50s and basically Mare, what it was is you would make a batter and you can see you've got a butterfly here, you've got a cup and you've got like a snowflake and those would screw onto this handle and you would uh, dip, you would dip the, see if I can do this quickly, you would make your batter, pretty thin batter then you would dip this um, cup, nah, I can't do it, you would dip this into the batter and then with this you would put it into deep hot oil and you'd have a little pastry cup that you could fill with things, okay? Or you'd have a snowflake or you'd have a butterfly and you'd dust it with powdered sugar. Anyways, here's the recipe book right there. Then we have stuff for, for measuring. So here are, these are a set of stainless steel measuring cups. These are ones that you see a lot. These are aluminum uh, measuring cups. Oh, here's something, Mayor. You know what you'd use that for? Think of a pie. Oh, to make the the pie crust fancy? Yes, like the edge yeah. to sort of crimp it. Um, and then uh, measuring spoons, of course, right? Right. And then here's, look at this old measuring cup. Look how thick that glass is. You see that? Yeah. Heavy duty. Then we have a couple different um, flour sifters. These are made by Bromwells, and they are basically just a hand crank with a screen in there. Here's a larger one. I love these. Another popular manufacturer of flour sifters was Foley, and they had a one-hand action, okay? Where you had a, here's a, this one's quite big, five cups. This one's smaller. I think this is just maybe a, a cup and a half or two cup one. And Tip that flour. Then finally, we've got egg beaters, um, different styles. 
See this one, how it's kind of wavy here, Mayor? Yeah. They called that the rhythm beater for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, here's one with a sort of an offset handle. Look how long these beaters are on this one. And then here, this one's a nice one. It's got, it kind of got like a cane grip type handle, but a very smooth mechanism. Over here, stuff for decorating cakes. So you see this has got three different edges here and you can see how it works. You just, you spread it around the icing of the cake and it makes these nice lines. And then this also made by Foley, these are like cutouts. And so you'd have your, your pastry there and you could cut out little pieces in different shapes. And then, you know what this is? It's not a, it's not, <laughs> It's not a syringe. Um, it's you put frosting or something. Yes, in there? it's for decorating. So you'd put your frosting in there, and, or you could use it if you were filling like um, you wanted to make real fancy deviled eggs. You know, you could put the the mashed up yolk in here, yeah. and you could put different tips on it and push it out. Look at this, Mayor. We're talking about donuts before. Here is whoop. Here is a donut maker. So you put the batter in the cup and look how it comes out. And you drop that right into the hot, um, the hot oil for your donuts. Making donuts at home was a very popular thing at one time. Here's a decorating thing that if you bought two tubs of Cool Whip, you got a Cool Whip squiggle decorator and basically you'd put the cool whip inside this tube and you could see you'd push it out and it have and it would come out with different sort of designs if you were if you were going to frost or decorate with cool whip mayor look at this pie getter outer and it even has a little thing to push it off onto the plate you want to make sure that everybody gets the same size piece. Look at this. Used to see these at restaurants a lot where they would cut the pie with using one of these and it would ensure that all slices were the same. Then, I forgot I had this mold. Um, here is a, uh, they, they make these, they still make them in all sizes and shapes. And I guess you could, what? make a cake yeah uh, um, you could uh, make chocolate a chocolate bunny a big one um, use it for things like that so anyways all just just it goes on and on the wonderful uh, gadgets and kitchen tools that have been made over the years and you know what let me know in the comments if you remember a gadget that you loved or your mother or somebody you knew who was their go-to thing that they always had handy in the kitchen. Um, and you know, some of this stuff was sort of an interesting idea but not always super practical. Um, but some of these gadgets really you can't do without like a, potato, a good potato peeler, uh, things to chop, things to grate. Uh, with um, things, certainly things to measure. Uh, so good kitchen tools are important to have on hand. I want to say thank you to my sister. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, honey, for working the camera uh, for this edition here of Cavalcade of Food. Uh, we'll remind our friends the website is cavalcadeoffood.com. Please subscribe if you like what we do around here and you're so inclined share and like and uh we will look forward to seeing you again real soon right back here on cavalcade of food until then take care everybody bye bye